our next session, A02, Enhancing Students' Critical Thinking Skills Through Gamification, a case study from a critical thinking course in university from Dr. Noor Aisha. May I welcome Dr. Noor Aisha? Can you see us? Okay. Okay. I still try to share my slide. Hold on. Uh, can you share again? We saw it just now. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Does it work now? Okay. Does it work? Not yet. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. All right. All right. So, uh, assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. So, uh, today we'll be presenting our research on enhancing students' critical thinking skills through gamification, a case study from critical thinking course in university. Um, yeah, to present it today, um, it's me, Dr. Nuraini Abushamsi and Dr. Nur Aisha. I will start first. Um, by giving a bit of introduction. Um, so firstly, I'm just going to keep a bit of comparison between conventional learning and personalized learning. As we all know, in conventional learning, um, the setting is the is a teacher-centered where the teacher holds all the information and will, the student will be passively received it and um, the course material is predetermined and it's basically use a generic model um, where one size fits for all somehow it does not account for students' preferences and students' unique characters. In conclusion, somewhat, it has been perceived as ineffective and boring. Whereas in personalized learning, teachers' role is to guide in collaborative and interactive setting, rather than being teacher-centered in the conventional learning, personalized learning emphasizes on student role, where students can be independent, where they can search sources and experts online. And when they search, they have all, all the powers lies on them where they can focus on their own interests and their personal goals. So in our study, we are looking at personalized learning through gamification. So what is gamification? It is basically game elements in the learning process. It is important not to be confused with the, with the digital game-based learning where you where, um, it use game in the learning, you build um, an educational game and use that game in the lesson, but in gamification, you basic the whole lesson is actually a game. So you integrate game elements in the learning process. Um, an example, so this game main element are um, rewards, leaderships, um, scoreboard. Um, it aims to create competition between two different parties and learn through the competition. It also tries to change the learning materials and activities into a playful experience. So with this gamification, we somehow aim to capture the issue that conventional learning has, such as um, unable to capture different preferences or different unique interests. So with gamification, students um, who love to study, uh, who love to learn through games and experiential learning, they can um, enjoy this um, learning experience. So, question, why gamification? First of all, it is easy and attractive, and as we all know, um, this current generation, they are more into games, they are more, um, more hands-on um, generation. Um, it also, gamification um, in the literature has shown that it increase the interaction between educators, students, and students, students, because there is an interaction through the games, um, rather than, you know, having a boring class where all the lecturers taking in charge of giving all the information, the students can, you know, um, get involved. Um, it also align with the Malaysia Education Blueprint with the current one. It also helps students in socializing and increase their social network. As I said, it increases interaction with the students and uh, educators and also with the, among the students. It encourages learning activities, increase learning engagement, and also improves students' cognitive skills. So our research objective is firstly to enhance students' critical thinking skills through gamification in learning. Second is to study students' perception on gamification in learning. And our research Research questions are how gamification enhances students' critical thinking skills in learning and how does students perceive gamification in learning. So I'll pass the presentation to Dr. Aisha. All right. Okay, this is um, the interesting part. Our case study um, is about gamification in philosophy course. Philosophy course. 
uh, to students with science background. And all of the students or participants have um, are enrolled in one faculty subject that is logic and critical thinking. Okay, this, uh, these are our sampling. Uh, there are university students aged between 19 to 23 years old. Um, about 390 students for the class and it is purposive sampling and all as I said all of these students have uh, been enrolled in a philosophy course that is logic and critical thinking course and this course is actually a faculty selective course and all of these students has access to the internet and they have gadget to access the internet, either laptop, tablet, or mobile phone. Mobile phone because gamification uh, for this for this study, we use um, this gadget to uh, do some uh, gamified learning. And this is the research design in week three. That is after an Android week. Uh, all of the students have been uh, given. Pre-test that is Malaysian critical thinking instrument version six, active six, um, and after that, in starting from week four until week thirteen, the gamified learning has been uh, has been used to the students. I mean, in the class, and this type of learning, the gamification, is um, a mixture of online and of offline and online. Uh, gamification and I will explain this later and and then in week 14 there is a study week for the students and all of the lectures has been uh, has ended and then um, researcher has uh, give uh, the students the post test of uh, the same test Malaysian critical thinking instrument version 6 to see whether uh, these students uh, has somehow enhanced their critical thinking skills uh, in the lesson. Alright, this is the learning, the lesson. Firstly, uh, in week three, uh, numbers were assigned to all students. So as you can see, from the first uh, first step they got into the class, they actually has involved in the gamification. They have been the players. They themselves have been the players in the lessons. And uh, numbers, uh, uh, researcher used these numbers from uh, the students' list, from course portal provided by the university. And then all of the students uh, created their avatar, that is the virtual identity in online gamification. And uh, they use their metric number SID, just for the emoji or whatever image they want to uh, show in the leaderboard. And then, um, Throughout the gamification learning, right, the gamification process, um, top ten of leaderboard in the leaderboard gets immunity. Immunity that that means that um, okay, whenever uh, in the class, researcher will ask uh, some question, but whether a uh, question or maybe uh, researcher needs uh, students to give uh, some examples um, according to topic that is discussed at that time. So, this uh, top 10 of the leaderboard gets, uh, gets to choose not to answer uh, the question that has been asked uh, by the lecturer and pass it to the other classmate. classmate. And um, that is the offline uh, gamification. And the online, we also uh, do online quiz. We use uh, quizzes and uh, this uh, platform we use it uh, during lesson, that, that means in the class, and also as homework for the students. Um, normally, uh, we use, uh, we give the quiz uh, based on the topic that has been discussed or um, are going to be discussed during the lessons. And each quiz has 10 to 20 questions at a time. This type of um, online quiz also has helped us in flip learning because we can assign the home uh, homework or home quiz prior lecture and because of that uh, 
we will we will uh, we are able to do the revision during lecture um, on the most incorrect answers. That that means if, as you know, in um, quizzes, for example, we can see the percentage of um, students who have answered correctly in each question. So, for example, if we see that one uh, question number one. 80% uh, gets incorrect answers, so we need to revise that uh, particular subtopic in the uh, classroom. And then, um, I, um, we have seen that throughout the learning process, uh, we managed to increase the attention and satisfaction in learning because uh, students get, he they actually ask us where is the quiz? So they get, they, they always match each topic with quiz. So uh, if we don't give them quiz, they will ask for it because it, it is fine for them, for the lesson. And uh, this is the test or a uh, test instrument that has been used for this study. The Malaysian Critical Thinking Instrument version 6. Why we use this test? Because this test has been developed by um, local local researcher with local context because this uh, Dr. Agbaria has um, taken into account uh, the culture of uh, the, the test, the, the testers, I mean all the participants before designing the test. So it is based on the conceptualization of the Malaysian Society critical thinking model, namely the Akbar critical thinking model. So uh, this test measure four cognitive skill areas that is cognitive complexity, thinking disposition, metacognition, and also conscience. But for this study, we only look at cognitive, metacognitive, and, and conscience. And the, the tech analysis has been, uh, we have used rush measure for the tech analysis. Uh, level of difficulty, critical each item has been considered for the tech analysis. Um, and uh, for this test, it has Form A, Form B, and Form C. Form A uh, test students in terms of cognitive skills. Uh, it has 78 items and use scale of uh, 0 to 100%. While Form B, uh, it tests metacognition of uh, the students. It has 19 items, use Likert scale 1 to 5, uh, from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And Form C on the concise. Uh, it has 36 items, uh, which are uh, using scale um, of 0 to 100%. And these are the results for cognitive metacognition and also conscience. As you can see, um, there are uh, a sort of a significant difference in the post-test uh, for metacognition and also for cognitive, but not for the conscience. Uh, why? Uh, I will tell you after this. Okay, because for, for the concerns, um, we have not emphasized on the topic during the course. Bec uh, the, the, the emphasis has been given uh, greatly in terms of metacognitive and cognitive, and it shows in the results, uh, students' result. Uh, and um, actually, for the metacognition in the course, um, students has demonstrated a medical core level of uh, metacognitive. And this is on the perception of uh, gamification by the students. Um, after the, the learning process has ended, we, uh, we get feedback from the students. 90.1% percent thinks that the gamification made the class more interesting. They like the way uh, the class has uh, been uh, conducted. And 78% perceive that gamification increased the interaction between students and lecturers. And it has been a very dynamic uh, lesson be uh, and also engagement between lecture and uh, students. And lastly, 78% think thinks that gamification helped them to understand the subject easily, as I said. It helped us in um, conducting flip learning during uh, our lesson. And uh, lastly, the conclusion, um, as I said, most students agree that gamification has helped them focus in class learning. They always engage in the topic and ask for quiz right after the topic has ended. And they feel disappointed when no quiz given to them. They like to play. 
they like to see their avatar on top of the leaderboard. Um, and um, that shows that students prefer more exercise for the subject as it helps them in understanding of the topics. It sort of tests their understanding. And um, educator needs to embed online and offline if you want to if you want to do this uh, gamification uh, approach or pedagogy you, you need to embed online and offline type of gamification because firstly it gives varieties to your lesson and secondly uh, there is contingency plans if there's no internet connection at a time and another uh, there are two uh, downsides uh, for online um, some of the time, students left their mobile phone or laptop at home and their gadget has no battery. So you need to be ready for the offline uh, gamified uh, learning. And then uh, another, another one is uh, educator needs to prepare early for materials prior to each class because each quiz needs to be designed early according to topic or prior before the uh, topic is discussed in uh, the class. Okay, for the impact to the community and society, as you know, nowadays we are dealing with uh, COVID-19. So most classes are online and uh, this uh, type of gamification, especially online gamification, is good tools to interact with students in a fun way. And um, this will be the new norm in learning where students can learn with their own pace. So you can do the live quiz or you can make it as homework. So um, it sort of is not too rigid or strict. So it will be uh, the lesson, especially philosophy lesson, it will be so boring if you're not uh, interact with students and asking students questions. This will be another platform or approach uh, that is fun to, to be used. And these are our references uh, for uh, this slide for presentation. Thank you, that's all. Thank you, Dr. Aisha and Dr. Aini. Um, we will uh, gather the um, question and answer session towards the end of the whole session. We listen from all the speakers for now. But I really like and inspired the. Uh, I'm really inspired by the gamification process and how lecturers can adopt this. We will really like to learn more from you. Inshallah. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your sharing.